Welcome to the Freddie Jones Show. Speak the word only. I'm your host, the Reverend Freddie Jones from Hand in Hand Direct Care Ministry, Inc., a local nonprofit organization based in Bristol, Connecticut. And it is my privilege and an honor to have this opportunity to preach and to teach the word of God to the nutmeg television viewing audience. And with that being said, welcome to the show. I appreciate you for taking the time out of your day to spend a little bit of your time with me. And uh, around this time of the show, I normally would like to say this is where you get on the phone and call somebody you love, your family members, or get people from other rooms in your home and get together and you sit down around the television and you watch the word of God come forth because the man of God is about to open up the word of God in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's just, it's just, I love to, I just love to be in that number. And it's, it's just truly a blessing to be able to share the word of God with you all. It's truly a blessing. I'm, is this, I'm lost for words. I, 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 I just, I'm, a, I'm lost for words. It's, I thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So today, I'm going to be reading from the book of 1 John. And I'm going to be coming from chapter 4. And a psalm I'm going to be reading, I'm going to be reading Psalms 90. And what I'm going to be talking about today is the spirit or spirits. Let me, let me be more clear. I'm a, as plural, the spirits, the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, and also demonic spirits. The spirit of the devil or the spirit of antichrist. The spirit of God and the spirit of the devil. Demonic spirits that are in this world today. And there's a distinction between the two. There's a distinction between the spirit of God and demonic spirits. The devil is the prince of this world right now. As a Christian, we are in the world, but we are not of the world. We know that the world is set up according to the devil. The devil is the prince of the world. The world is set up for the world to destroy anything that is not from the world. That's why it's so hard and it's so difficult for Christians to navigate through a sinful world. It's like we're swimming upstream. We're going against the tide. The world is coming this way, and the body of Christ is going that way. The world is opposition to us. The world is opposition to us. And if the world is opposition to us, that means that we are opposition to the world. Hallelujah. But we have to stand as strong soldiers in the army of God. And we have to be able to recognize the spirit of Antichrist will recognize the spirit of the devil when it comes to the church because the devil is in the church. The devil is in the church house. He's in there and he's disguised himself. The Bible says he disguised himself as an angel of light. That's how he gets you. That's how the devil comes to you and he gets you. We're thinking that the devil is this big, ugly guy with the horns and he's red and the pitchfork. We can see that type of a devil coming a mile away. But no, that ain't the devil. The devil is cunning. The devil is sly. The devil is has the ability to come right up on you, get close up on you, and you don't even know that it's him because he's going to come in peace He's going to act like he's coming in peace and he's going to act like he's a friend and he's going to tell you all the things you want to hear. He's going to make it seem like you're so glad that you met this person. And all the while, they are full of the devil. Hallelujah. I don't want to go too far. I didn't even pray yet. But the this, this subject at hand is so vital that we need to be able to understand the difference between the spirit of God and the spirit of the devil. Hallelujah. So right now, after you called all your family members into the same room and you guys are ready to hear the word of God, the man of God is about to bring the word of God. And we're just going to rely on the spirit to give us revelation today. So if you can, please bow your heads with me and let's pray before we get into the topic at hand. 
Father God, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and I will be glad in it. I thank you for waking me up this morning, Father God. I thank you for putting breath in, in my lungs. Thank you for allowing my feet to carry me throughout the day. I thank you for allowing my eyes to see the goodness and the glory of the Lord. Father God, be with us all today. Be with everyone that's underneath the sound of my voice, Father God, as we get into the word of God. I pray that you touch their minds. I pray that you touch their spirits, Lord Jesus. And if, and if they're hurting in their body, I pray that you heal their bodies today, Lord Jesus. I pray that you deliver them from any substance or anything that has them bound today because there's power in your word, Lord Jesus. And all we have to do is just speak the word only. And on the strength of the word going forth, combined with the belief of the person on the other, and all things is possible. All things is possible to him that believe. Open up our minds today, Father God. Move in us today. Let the Holy Spirit just, just rear up its power and its love and, and just work in our lives, Father God. Transform us today. Let this word that is going to come forth today be informational today. Father God, let us be able to have the spirit of discernment today. And if we don't have the spirit of discernment already, Father God, I pray that it's developed during the course of this program. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. One more time again. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God slain. For the sins of the world, my Lord, my Savior, Jesus, the Christ, the anointed one, full of love. Hallelujah. Okay, and now I'm going to read Psalms 90. So you can turn to Psalms 90 with me. I'm going to turn there slow. You know how, I, you know how I'm going to do it. I'm going to turn there slow because I have to allow everyone the opportunity to get there so that we can partake in this word together in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. Glory to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Oh Lord, I praise you. I worship you. And I praise you and I magnify your holy name. Psalms 90 reads as such. Lord. Though has been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever though had formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Yes, Lord. You turn of men to destruction and say, of Return, ye children of men. For a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday. When it is past, and as a watch in the night, though carrieth them away as with a flood, they are as asleep in the morning. They are like grass which grows up. In the morning it flourishes and grows up, and in the evening it is cut down, and it is weather. For we are consumed by your anger, and by the wrath are we troubled. Though has set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of thy countenance, Lord Jesus. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spent our years as a tale that is told. The days of our years are threescore years and ten. And if by reason of strength, Lord Jesus, they be fourscore years, yet is their strength labor and sorrow for it is soon cut off and we fly away we know of the power of your anger even according to thy fear so is thy wrath to teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom hallelujah return O lord how long and let it repent thee concerning thy servants Oh, satisfy us early with thy mercy, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad according to the days wherein thou hast afflicted us, and the years wherein we have seen evil. 
Let thy work appear unto thy servants and thy glory unto your children, their children. And let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us and establish, though, the work of our hands upon us. Yeah, Lord, the work of our hands establish, though, it. Hallelujah. Psalms 90. Psalms 90. All right, now, you got to keep your Bible open and flip with me to the New Testament. Now, we're going to the book of 1 John. 1 John. And we're going to be in the chapter 4, and I'm going to try to work my way, and I'm going to work my way through the whole chapter, church of chapter 4, the book of of first John and the subject today is the spirit of God a true spirit and a lying spirit we need to realize and recognize that there is a true spirit the Holy Ghost and there is a lying spirit a demonic spirit a devilish spirit and sometimes that devilish spirit will trick or fool a child of God and believing that that lying demonic spirit is actually the spirit of God, but it's not the spirit of God. Oh Lord, I pray for the sermon today. I pray for your people to be aware of discernment. Glory. I'm going to start reading chapter four, verse one. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. That's verse one. That's, that's how the chapter starts. He's warning us not to believe every spirit. Believe not every spirit, but try the spirit. Don't be afraid to try the spirit. You see, just because of a title that a man or a woman of God is holding, just because of a circumstance or a position that someone is holding, that doesn't mean you should not try that spirit when they're trying to lay their hands on you, when they're trying to speak into your life. You, you, you got to be careful when you allow certain people to speak into your life. You have to make sure that it's the spirit of God and it's not the spirit of Antichrist. Verse 2. Whereby know ye the spirit of God, every, every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. Say that again. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. Every spirit that says Jesus Christ is the way, Jesus Christ is the truth, Jesus Christ is the life, that is coming from the spirit of God because that is true. God sent his son into the world to save the world from sin. And Jesus Christ is the way, he's the truth and he's the life and that no man can come to the father except through the son. Now the devil don't want to tell you that. So he will walk around it. Come on now. I need you to be aware now. I need, I need you to be aware. Be aware of what I'm saying. And be aware of what you're seeing in the church, in your church, maybe. But it's out here. Be aware of what you're seeing on your TV, televangelists, churches that you visit and churches that you go to. Be aware of that spirit. You have to be aware of that spirit because it is out here. And like I just explained in chapter in verse two, whereby I know you the spirit of God, and every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is coming to the is Jesus Christ is coming to flesh is of the spirit of God. So basically, if the gospel is being preached in your church, and there the the preacher or the prophet, whoever is ministering, is letting you know. That Jesus Christ is the only way. That Jesus Christ is the truth. 
and that God sent him to save the world from sin, you would know that that is the spirit of God. But on the contrary, when the preacher at hand or the prophet or the minister, or whoever it is that is preaching, they may be saying some good stuff. They may be giving some inspirational information, you know, like a life coach or, well, you know, whatever it may be. They may sound good and they may be saying some good things. And if, but if you don't hear the gospel of Jesus Christ nowhere in there, I'm not saying that that's the spirit of Antichrist. I'm not saying that that's the spirit of the devil. What I'm saying is that's a spirit that you should try. Because you don't know if that's the Antichrist spirit, the spirit of the devil. You don't know. Because what is required from the spirit of God is missing. When someone gets, you know, up and they start preaching on the five steps to be right. Or whatever it may be that does not include the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Be Larry. Be worry. I need you to understand that I'm not saying that just because you're preaching anything other than the gospel that, that, that you're from the devil. That is not the word that's coming out of my mouth. But the word that is coming out of my mouth, you have to be able to use your discernment. You have to be able to say it to yourself and go to scripture and compare the scripture to what you're hearing out of the, out of the, the speaker's mouth. It's very hard to di if di differentiate between the two, especially if you're not strong in the faith. Verse 3. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist. Whereof you have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. The spirit of Antichrist is the false prophets in the days after Jesus came and the church was being established. There were false prophets and the false prophets were influenced by demonic spirits. They're professing to be a prophet of God, but they're actually under the demonic spirit of the devil. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 4, ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Greater is the spirit that is in you, the Holy Spirit, than he that is in the world, the spirit of the devil, the demonic spirit, the spirit of the Antichrist. Greater is the Holy Spirit than the spirit of the devil. Greater is he that is in you, child of God. Child of God, man of God, woman of God. Greater is that spirit that is in you than that spirit that is in the world. We have to realize and recognize that the devil is real. Like, like that's, that's the elephant in the room. We love to talk about the goodness of God and we love to talk about, you know, how God is moving. But we don't really like to talk about how real this devil is. This devil is a real. We, we are up against a real devil. And there are things that the devil can do. The devil is not as powerful as God. The devil cannot overcome God. And actually, the devil is a defeated foe to everyone that confessed Christ in their life. He's underneath your foot. He's a defeated foe. But that doesn't mean that he will not try to deceive you. That doesn't mean that he will not try to trick you into following behind him again after you have defeated him by accepting Jesus Christ. I want you to, maybe you know about this story in the Bible, or maybe you don't, when Moses went to Pharaoh to free the children of Israel, Moses took his staff, come on now, and he took his staff. He wanted to show Pharaoh that he was operating underneath the, the spirit of God. He wanted him to know that he wanted, Moses wanted Pharaoh to know, I ain't on my own. I ain't coming up against you on my own. 
there's a something in me. There's something on me. So he took his staff and he threw it on the ground. And then it became a snake. And Pharaoh seen his staff become a snake. And guess what? Pharaoh was not impressed. Huh? Pharaoh was not impressed. Pharaoh thought he was just some other wizard. He was just some other sorcerer that he have around him on a daily basis. Pharaoh have wizards and sorcerers around him all the time performing all these demonic acts. So he seen supernatural, but he seen supernatural from the devil. He seen the devil make things happen. So when Moses threw his rod on the ground and it became a snake, Pharaoh said, all right, okay, all right, okay. Uh, 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 let me show you some. So Pharaoh called, you know, the, the, the wizards and the people that he had with him to come up front center stage. And he said, you seen what this man did? And he said that it was from the power of God. Show him some. And they took, they, they took a stick or something. They threw it on the ground and theirs became snakes as well. So there is some power in the devil. The devil is the prince of this world. And he's a demon. And there's power in him. But the difference is, the snake that Moses had ate up the other snakes. Because the power of the Holy Spirit is greater than the power of the devil. The power of the Holy Spirit is greater than the power of the Antichrist. The power of the Holy Spirit is greater than demonic power. But that doesn't negate the fact that there is demonic power operating in this world. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Pay attention, please. Pay attention. Pay attention, please. Pay attention. Verse 5. They are of the world. Therefore speak they of the world. And the world heareth them. We are of God. He that know of God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of a lie. Let me go back to six again. We are of God. He that knows God hears us. The people that have the Holy Spirit in them, they hears us and they understand us. He that is not of God does not hear us. Hereby know we the spirit. This is how we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of a lie. Verse seven. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and every one that loves is born of God and knows God. Verse 8, he that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Verse 8, he that loveth not knows not God, for God is love. You can't confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. You can't confess to be born again from the inside, born anew, and not operate in love. Because God is love. Love is not something that God has. Love is who God is. He is love. And when you're born again, he puts himself, the Holy Spirit, which is God, he puts himself in you. Now, the love of God dwells in you. Hallelujah. Now, the love of God is dwelling in you. And this was manifested, the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten son into the world, that we might live through him. God sent his only begotten son in the world so that we may live through him, because we are doomed to death. We are doomed to a devil's hell. But God sent his only begotten son into the world so that we can live through him. Through him. So wherein is love? Not that we love God, but that God loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. No man have seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. 
whereby know we that we dwell in him and he in us because he have given us of his spirit. 13 again, whereby know we that we dwell in him. This is how we know that we dwell in God. And he is in us because he have given us his spirit. God changes us from the inside out. He changes our hearts. He changes who we are as a person. We, 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 he takes the heart of stone and replaces it with a heart of flesh. He puts the love of God on the inside of us and we become a new creature. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwells in him, and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love. I'm going to say that again. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Wherein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. Verse 17, one more time. Wherein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. So when it's the day of judgment comes, so when it's time for us to stand before God, we're going to have boldness. When that day comes, because as he is, who is he? Jesus, so are we in the world. So when that day of judgment comes and we stand before God, we don't have anything to worry about. We can be bold because it's not us that he sees. It's his son because we're in his son, because we're covered by the blood of his son, because he took all of our sins and threw them as far as the east is from the west. He said he will remember them no more. So when God looks on us, he don't see us. He sees his son. Hallelujah. There is no fear in love. But perfect love casts out fear. Because fear has torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. 18. There is no fear in love. But perfect love casts out fear. Perfect love casts out fear. Because fear has torment. That's what fear does. Fear wants you to be afraid. Fear cripples you. Fear stops you and keeps you from accomplishing your dreams. Fear keeps you in one spot. Fear has you stuck like this. You're afraid to move. You're afraid to open up your mouth. You're afraid to say what the Lord said. You're afraid to walk out what the Lord has instructed you to do. You're afraid to follow your passions. You're just afraid. You're afraid. You're afraid. And God did not give us the spirit of fear. That spirit of fear did not come from God. So where did it come from? Augustino, I'd like to welcome you to the Clam Box, where we do seafood our way. We got lobster roll, fried clams, fish and chip, fried shrimp, and our famous onion rings. We put a lot of precaution into the safety for you and your family. Not only do we use plexiglass at the catch register and sanitizer, we all wear gloves and we all keep a six foot distancing and everybody must wear a mask. We carry all the options. We got DoorDash, Grubhub, Uber Eats, and of course, we got Curbside where we bring it right to your car. Online ordering is available at clamboxnewbritain.com or by calling us at 860-357-3118. The Clambox, 586 West Main Street, New Britain.